We have one goal tonight. One mission tonight, okay? Today's Friday, first night of the meetup. And in prior meetups, what's happened is Bao gets drunk, he talks to everyone all night long, and he loses his voice. He's at the meetup, he can't talk to anyone. So I talked to Steven today to make sure that Bao doesn't get drunk. I talked to Joe today to make sure that he has backup in case Bao doesn't get drunk. If any of you guys see Bao drinking today, that means we failed our mission. So more updates to come. <laughs> After almost being late two hours, we're finally on the plane on the way to Utah. I don't know if we're gonna make it on Friday now. We said Bao's not allowed to drink. I don't even know if I'm gonna be able to get there. Let's see what happens. 10 p.m. Just landed in Utah. Gonna go pick up the car from the rental car area, and then drive another hour, and hopefully we get to the hotel by 11 p.m. We missed the meetup. What I heard, there were so many people that they got kicked out. Now they're all going to the bar down the corner. So I've been texting Bao, I've been texting Oliver, I've been texting everyone. No one's responding, so I guess that's something good. So I guess we'll see what happens when we get to Provo at 11 p.m. Bro, valet is a fucking beast, bro. Beast. I've never been in Tesla. I've always wanted to drive a Tesla. And here we are, driving a Tesla. Guy drives a Lambo every day, but he wants to drive a Tesla. What's going on, Luha? How's it? How are we doing? <laughs> You're an actual human. <laughs> no, I was so sad yesterday. What happened? Just... I had to get my passport to pick it up. So we were already up for like 24 hours. Yeah, what, what's the deal with the passport shit going on, bro? So I got it renewed and like, <laughs> hey, never sent it, never sent it. And then, so I was like, how do I get it? They're like, if you drive down to an office, we'll print you on right here. So I was like, fuck, gotta drive down to an how office. How far is the office? Like five, six hours. <laughs> back then was just pumping and dumping, right? This is their chance to freaking make money for themselves by pumping these stocks that like, promoters pay them, things like that. So Alice and I wanted to actually educate people. But education is the hardest thing to do in the world. And who the fuck wants to educate and learn? I just want free money, quick, right? When we first started this, it was almost because we needed it, right? Yeah. Me and Bao were almost in a dark place. We were making a bunch of money together, making stupid amounts of money together every day, in one hour a day. And after making so much money, we felt a little bit of emptiness. We felt, you know, what is the point? Why are we doing this? And, you know, there was two days a week that Bao would show up because he'd be drinking for five <laughs> days a week. It was, it's funny, but it was a dangerous, dangerous road that he was going down. And, you know, I found myself a little bit lost too, so MIC almost helped save our lives, and now by doing it, we're helping change other people's lives too. So thank you everyone for trusting us. Thank you everyone for being here. So as you guys can see, everyone's pretty much a normal person, you know, like everyone didn't really explain their day jobs, but like everyone also has pretty much a day job that they use to supplement their income as well. So I always like to say like, you know, I, I love the fact people call me a drunk because you know what, if this drunk, this idiot can do it, you can do it too. That's my point. You don't need to be fucking, when I was young, I thought you needed to go to Harvard and be Goldman Sachs and trade, right? That's the, that's the opinion that they tell you because they want you to be stupid. So that they, they take your money and they put it in their own pocket. And so when I realized that, dude, I could be fucking drunk and still make fucking money. <laughs> it's just that the, the, you have to accept reality. Like, I'm not going to make a million dollars, which I did, but I'm just saying, like, but you can't be drunk, right? But, you know, he builds up to that point. Be realistic with your expectations. That's the thing. When you make a hundred bucks, don't look at another guy who made ten thousand dollars and go, "Fuck, why does this make sense?" He took a long time to get there. Maybe he risked more, whatever. And so every like, I like what Tom said. Everybody's journey is different. This is why I love this 
this team. We're a bunch of misfits that make it work and it's going to change the world. The next uh, group of people I want to choose is my good friend. Actually, I've known this guy for like a decade, long before anything like this. We, we never imagined that we would work together, but then, you know, like I told you, right, everything happens for a reason. Friends, family all come together and, you know, and so I'm going to introduce you to our partner, our brokerage partner, uh, Success Trader. So here's the CEO of Success Trader. Um, <laughs> Let's do the TikTok dance, come on. Our first TikTok. Hello, everybody. Thank you for uh, coming. This is an amazing event. So, yeah, as Bao mentioned, our relationship goes back to over a decade. I've been a broker for over 20 years. As long as Bao's been trading, I've been a broker in one way or another. I've been with my current firm, Regal Securities, for 11 years. When I came to the firm, I created my own division targeted specifically to professional traders. Essentially, I came from <coughs> various brokerage firms where we dealt with institutions, family offices, uh, small to medium-sized hedge funds, and I wanted to take some of that experience and bring it over to the retail side. And, you know, originally, we were dealing with exclusively guys like Bao, like Alex, you know, just basically the biggest traders in the industry, at least that was the target. What's up? Recently, like within the past year or so, on the first red days, we've started to notice that, or at least I have noticed that, you used to get that fade all day, right? But now, you're not really getting that fade as much, and they're pulling it after hours, like on BBBY. Have you noticed that? Are you adjusting um, to that? Like, basically is what I'm saying, and I know you won't adjust the way you trade based on one, one trade or one missed opportunity but are you noticing that and are you going to possibly make any changes to you know may you know like if you didn't get the move that you were wanting like for example on BBBY right uh, you know maybe not cut all of it you know right before the end uh, or right, right before the close and then we'll have like are you adjusting are you adapting yeah that? so like, is that something you've noticed as well I definitely noticed it and I think what's been happening is it's just been getting a lot more crowded yeah. a lot of people didn't really understand what the first red day was when we first started now after three four years of doing it a lot more people are catching on it's becoming a lot more well known and when everyone is doing the same thing almost the inverse happens so what I've noticed is it still works pretty freaking good until zombie times but now they're starting to zombie more whereas in the past they wouldn't have that same zombie move the way to adjust to it is to still respect that zombie move and maybe stop for me personally to stop being greedy looking for that all-day fader because it's just not working in this current market environment the trade still works the setup still works it's just instead of being a six hour setup that works from boom to boom it's now become like a two hour setup. That's the adjustment. And for Bed Bath & Beyond, that's just a whole shit storm of stuff happening. That's There's, a one off shit. That's, that's yeah. yeah. Cohen selling and then yeah, the CFO but, selling. And, and the meme stock. <laughs> yeah. When to bet heavy? Because I think a lot of people have a lot of questions about sizing, when to size in. And Bao actually told me this a while ago is what my biggest mistake was. I was sizing into everything. I thought the way to make money is you bulldoze into every single day and that's how you make money. But as I've evolved and as I've grown is what is your best setup? What is the setup that you make the most money on? For me, it's the first Friday. I know that whenever that setup comes along that if I am not wiring into my brokerage and 
putting in money and bulldozing in, <laughs> I can't take advantage of it. You know, there's oftentimes, I remember when the whole GameStop fiasco was going crazy. I had maybe a $50,000 in my account at that point. And I knew that a first red day was coming. At that day, I wired in $300,000 into my broker. I shorted, you know, 30,000 shares and I made $300,000. When that opportunity is there, I'm not afraid to size in. I'm not afraid to load the boat, but day-to-day -day stuff is not when you size in. So if you are struggling to find the trades that make you the most amount of money, ask yourself, what is your best setup? If you don't know your best setup, you should not be sizing, number one. After you identify that setup, if that setup comes along, that is your opportunity to be able to size in exponentially. And to me, I size in to the point where I, Ross knows it too, I just fucking go in there. I go in there and it leads to those days, but I don't go in there on a random Tuesday. I go into those setups. I take those opportunities when it's there. And sometimes even making hundreds of thousands of dollars, I'm still not enough because I know I could have done better. <laughs> when you see a stock just go down, 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 and it's going the same fucking rate, it don't, don't fucking touch it. It's not done. It's when it slows down. So uh, this is a physics thing. So you throw the ball in the air, it goes to parabola, right? At the top, the velocity is zero and it changes velocity, go downward, right? And so that's that's how I also if you're a, if you're a momentum trader, that's how you top it. You wait to see boom 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 boom. boom it also slows down. It means it's going to change. It's going to turn. To turn a car around, you have to slow down. So that's the secret: the bottom ticking and top ticking. Take a look at the rate of change of the prints as it closes to your line. And so that's why I always bottom tick and top tick. We're going to do that. Take a look at the speed at which all these things are ticking. When it slows down, it means you're running out of sellers or buyers, right? Yep. But do you guys wait for? Wait for the rejection, well not the rejection, but uh, wait for it to go below the friends, or do you just place your friends, you want to friends, you want to right there, within that range of the friends, and then just hold, just in case it goes uh, against you, for 10, 20 yeah. cents, yeah. or, I don't, I don't know if you- So like, let's say my line's 13.50, okay? No, let's say $1.50 to make it more simple. $1.50, okay? And, you know, there's a support level around $1.50. So we're going and we're like $1.52, $1.51, $1.50. And then we break that $1.50, right? Where a lot of people, just like the, the whole and a half dollar marker is about said, right? We go underneath that and we're printing 48, 48, 47, 48, 47. I want to get in right there because that should have broken down way more. For long traders, that's the hard stop, right? People are getting liquidated like underneath $1.50. So I want to keep. You know, I want to be looking around that level underneath my line a little bit. And I see that kind of prints go through and they're going through and they're going through. That's where I want to start to get involved in this ticker because it's going to bounce higher because everyone is so afraid they're selling out at the bottom. And then we go up and we look to sell higher.